good day everyone welcome to another edition of fly fishing in nature's run now this episode we're tying another fly and this fly is called the damsel nymph okay now the damsel nymph has been requested by a few um, of the viewers um, I had one gentleman by the name of Nick who uh, asked me what my favorite damsel nymph is and to answer that question Nick my favorite damsel nymph is this one right here it's called the well it's just the damsel nymph but it was shown to me by a gentleman by the name of John Rumpf uh, John Rumpf uh, in a previous uh, episode um, we tied his Rumpf spinner well um, I'm not sure but John Rumpf showed me this fight now, I'm not sure whether he actually developed it or not, um, but all I can say is he showed me this fly, and um, it is a, well, it's the best representation of the dam of a damsel nymph that I've ever seen. So um, I tie this all the time and fish this whenever I need to uh, imitate a damsel nymph. Now, the great thing about this fly is that it's, body is very slim okay um, this is one key feature of this fly and also the size of the eyes on the fly um, they're very good in showing the proportions all right now if your eyes are too big for the actual proportions of the fly it's not going to look natural you've got to get that perfect when you do do that and for a hook that I'm going to tie it on which is a size 12 long shank um, you need small eyes and the eyes are represented by uh, black beads with a center hole and we use monofilament and we thread the two beads onto the monofilament and then we tie that in in that fashion um, and it's the key feature another key feature of the fly is the size of the eyes and the other one is the tail which is if you look at a damsel nymph um, the tail of a damsel nymph has actually three paddle shaped um, uh, sections of the tail and what I do is I use a partridge feather which is uh, paddle shaped the way I put it in which represents all those three sections of the tail and um, that's another great feature of this fly so um, yeah let's start tying this fly and um, the materials that you will need uh, to tie this fly will be seen right in front of me right now and um, you can stop the video and pause it write those um, requirements down um, I don't use a rib in this fly and the reason for that is the body section of the fly is tied from seal's fur. Now, uh, sorry, it is a great material. And the material pulsates under the water. Seal's fur absolutely comes alive. It makes the fly come alive. And um, I find that adding ribbing to it can sort of like, um, you know, uh, stop that amount of fibres, you know, pulsating in the water and um, we need that so I dispense with any uh, wire ribbings you can still include them if you like because it's great wire can um, add a bit of glint to the fly um, it could uh, also act as segmentations of the actual um, fly but in this case I dispense with it so let's put the hook into the vise Make sure everything's nice and tight. And this is a straight eye, okay? You know, you have um, your hooks that have your down eye, straight eye, and up eye. This one's a straight eye. And the reason for a straight, straight eye, it really connects when you're retrieving this pattern. You want this pattern to really dart along nice and straight and a straight eye hook you know achieves that a lot better for you okay Fred 6-0 we need that for the strength okay you could use 8-0 but 
you're better off using 6.0 um, in this regard. So let's start tying this fly by putting the thread just below the eye of the hook. Cut away the surplus. And then bring it back to the position where you want to tie the eyes in. That's around right about there, guys. Right there. Okay, now, previously I've done this uh, beforehand. I have threaded the two bead eyes, two black bead eyes, with monofilament. And this monofilament's probably around about uh, six pound, eight pound. Um, you know, and these are very small beads. And probably the hardest part is actually threading um, the monofilament through the uh, through the hollow center there. Um, I found it very difficult indeed. But anyhow, let's tie this into position. And we want to separate them so push them down to the sides and then figure a vote all the time making sure that it's nice and straight and remember leave room for the wing case bigger of eight and a few wraps around the outside will definitely help And then advance down to the bend of the hook, carry the surplus monofilament, and then advance all the way to the bend of the hook okay now at this point we tie the tail in and what I've done I've pre-selected a olive green dyed um, partridge feather and I'm using the tip section or a very small section of the actual feather from the cape and um, I'm going to tie that in, and that's going to represent the tail paddles. Just strip away some of the rubbish fibers at the base, and then we'll put that into position. Alright, so tail, easy done there guys. Alright, now we need to build the body and this needs to be um, created with the use of olive green seals fur. Now like I said, seals fur is a great material. 
it really pulsates in the water and uh, it brings the fly to life and this is what it's all about guys you know we tie flies from fur feathers and tinsel all right now it's the fur feather and the, the natural material that makes a fly come alive you know if we were to tie a fly from just a you know plastic you know it's got the size it's got the shape but it doesn't come alive it's too inanimate all right it's uh it's not alive and that's what we want to have with our flies and this is why we tie you know out of natural materials to make sure that the fly comes alive so we take our seals fur now i have a dispenser here which is something that you might want to invest in with all the different um colors of seals fur i've got you know, I've got salmon pink, I've got a bright green, I've got uh, white, black, chocolate brown and a lot of different shades of olive green and um, I've already got some placed out here in front of me and there he is, just there so that's your seals fur guys and it's a, uh, I'd say uh, an olive green between dark and light would be uh, what I'd classify this colour. Now we take our thread and now what we have to do is to spin the seals fur onto the thread okay and we can separate it to make a small diameter of what we are dubbing onto the actual thread and by separating it, pulling it apart creates a small diameter and then we keep building that body up and make it slim guys now in a lot of nymph patterns that are other people do and I do it too we form a small diameter at the bottom and it gets bigger in diameter as we go up the body this fly this damsel nymph we want to keep it the same diameter the whole hook shank all right so it's very slim slender and very thin all right? now we go up to the point where We want to tie in the wing case. I've probably got a little bit too much just there. All right, so I'm going to spread that out a bit more. Yeah, that's it. That's what we want. Oop. and we don't want a really long wing case it's up to yourself you could you know your preference might be for a, a long wing case or a short wing case but i like to have a shortish you know shortish type of wing case which is around about that position there all right now for the wing case we use obviously uh, this pheasant pheasant tail fibers I use for that many wing cases it's not funny on different flies it's the ultimate material for that and but with this fly we only get ourselves around about say three four strands just a, a very small strip of it all right that's perfect we don't want any more than that and it's whip pointy end first and Sorry, no, pointing in at the back. So we want the flexible part of the actual 
our fish into our fathers and put them into position and we tie that in alright, cut away the surplus tie that down further as we go along and then come back to that point now this is the 4x section of the actual insect and again we use more seals fur. Now again we don't want it to be too thick in its diameter. So as we dub it on, we pull it apart to make that diameter more slender. And there we go, that's about what we want there. So we wind that seal fill on to that thickness. just below the eye there it needs to be dumped right on and then we go between the eyes and over alright now those fibers, we need to bring them over the actual eyes to create the ring case. Tie that down. surplus and the excess and whammo now what we do guys is we whip finish Make sure the eye is clear of any thread and all materials. And then we cut away the actual black thread there. Okay, now the last thing we need to do guys is to prick out the seals fur. We need to make sure that all that seals for isn't too tight. We need to get those fibers out so that they pulsate in the water and it makes the fly come alive. It's quite incredible. This seals fur is a great material, it really is, you know. And um,
All right. There you go. Looking beautiful. So I'll give you a close-up of this damsel nymph. And it's a ripper, guys. All right. Um, like I said, springtime's the best time to, well, that's when the damsel nymph start to hatch is around springtime. Um, and like I say, what makes this fly is the size of the eyes, all right? Um, and also the slender body and that paddle tail. It's just fantastic. And, um, you know, when John Rump showed me this fly, I just said, wow, this is an incredible pattern. And I've fished it ever since. And, boy, as it worked for me, I've, um, you know, caught some small fish on it. I've caught some big fish on it. Um, and I've done a few episodes where, you know, the damsel nymph has uh, been... Um, and it really, really worked well for me. So, um, and it all worked well for you guys. You know, there's some nymph, uh, damsel nymph patterns. I can, I can show you why it looks better. Because um, I had a fly. What did I do with it? Here it is, here. Now, if you have a look at this damsel nymph, see how the body's really got a lot of seals for... I suppose you can't see it too well from here, but this one's got a lot of seals for um, tie for the body and the thorax. And look at the eyes. The eyes are too big. So it makes it look, you know, and while it might still catch fish, I'm not saying it wouldn't catch fish, it's, it doesn't look as good as that pattern. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, you know, tie it like this, guys. Um, you'll find it uh, really good. There's a... Uh, uh, gentleman that I've been corresponding with uh, by the name of Nick. G'day Nick, how are you mate? Um, Nick, that's the damsel that you, you asked, you know, what uh, damsel near fire like to fish. That's the one, guys. You know, um, Nick, um, it's a really good, good fly to use. Alright, um, well, I hope you have uh, learnt something in this episode and um, I hope it really improves your fishing. Uh, give it a go and you'll be pleasantly surprised. Okay then guys, uh, this is Bruce Smith saying goodbye, and see you in the next episode of Fly Fishing in Nature's Run. Bye for now.